Hello everyone, we are in Berlin. Welcome to this short episode as part of the Berlin Guides Association. My name is Jonathan and today I want to tell you about a place that I feel is a living scar of the darkest times of Berlin history. We talk about the Second World War, the division of the city, but at the same time it's just a sort of tiny stone in what this city as an ecosystem represents. Today we talk about Anhalter Bahnhof. Bahnhof means in German train station, but originally it was a gate. So take a look at this beautiful gate. It takes you all the way back in time to the 19th century. Uh, now, originally this was part of the so-called customs wall, created by the kings with the idea of charging a royal fee for the import and export of goods. And most of you are familiar with the Brandenburg Gate, but this is one among the former 18 gates that you had in the city. We're gonna go right through it now because eventually this would be turned into a train station as Berlin was going through the industrialization process. In the late 19th century, the population more than doubles its size in less than 30 years. Suddenly you had this huge train station that would go all the way to the back about 170 meters, that's roughly 500 feet. You can see the area is completely empty now. There's a concert hall all the way to the back. Imagine that's where the station ended and the roof was as high as over 60 meters or 200 feet. Imagine eventually you could take a train from Rome, from Naples, from Athens, from Vienna, from Prague, arrive to Berlin, and then if you were lucky enough to afford a pretty good hotel, there was a hotel waiting for you 100 meters away. You could go through an underground hotel tunnel, 100 meters or 350 feet long, and arrive at the Hotel Excelsior. It was incredible. The thing, the, the hotel had 700 works of art. Uh, it had central heating and electricity. About 10 to 15,000 people would dine there every day. And yet, all we have left of the train station is the structure that you see over here. Now, why is that? Many of you can imagine. This has to do with the Nazi era. Hitler had this delusional idea of turning Berlin into Germania, which was supposed to become the capital of the world for the next thousand years. And as part of this, the trains are, were supposed to now only stop at the northern and southern part of the city. But this all heads west. So this did not fit Hitler's plan. And so Albert Speer, his chief architect, says, worry not, we'll just turn this into a swimming pool. Anyways, as the Second World War begins, this station will also become a symbol of the persecution and the genocide of the Nazi era. About 10,000 people would be deported from the station, most of them uh, elderly men and women. Uh, the way it worked is they the, the Nazis would attach a, a, an extra wagon of the third class to the morning services and then they would put in about 50 to 100 people in one single wagon. I want to show you a memorial now that will give you a better idea or will rather remember what happened back then. If you take a really close look, you can see the list of all the people being deported here month after month for years to come even as the bombings on Berlin were increasing the air rate. Now, in 1945, there's an event happening called the Battle of Berlin. The Soviets will send 2.5 million soldiers to invade and surround the city with the objective of ending the war. And it works. They end the war, but as part of this, the SS officers want to prevent them from getting close. So what they do is there's an underground tunnel over here. Um, they explode the bulkheads of it. It went underneath a canal and they flooded the whole thing. You have to imagine, you have to picture the fact that many Berliners were hiding in these tunnels uh, to use them as shelters, as bunkers. So many of them would be killed. We're talking about hundreds of them. Some people say that those numbers go up as high as in the thousands. In any case, after the war, the area is a little bit renovated. In the 50s, the Senator for Construction Berlin says that this structure is too unstable. The whole train station, which was severely damaged, but it turns out it was incredibly stable. They had to bring in a bunch of companies. They had to blow up the whole thing. And after a public outcry, this is all that remained, even throughout the division of Berlin. So what you see here is a structure that it's just part of everyday life in Berlin. Some people don't even notice it. But it's still that sort of little stone. It's a tiny piece in the beautiful puzzle 
that, in my opinion, is Berlin. A beautiful chaos as a city that is constantly changing and a city that I will continue loving telling you more about. I hope you enjoyed this one and until the next one. Bye-bye.